Whilst ship recycling in places such as Indonesia, pictured, may be considered environmentally beneficial in a wide context, it actually has significant negative impacts to worker health and the local environment. Health and environmental safeguards are often viewed as costly to profit. However, working with Newton Fund, British Council and Risk Tectecte, we are developing an integrated framework to enhance both safety and productivity in the industry, whilst also benefiting the environment. Transitioning to sustainable construction and manufacture is a challenge facing countries around the world. However, sometimes history provides the answers. Working with local people and scholars in Thailand, we took inspiration from traditional food processing methods to design a machine, pictured, to aid the production of interlocking bricks. Made from bamboo, the machine will sieve local natural materials like seashells, ensuring building construction is sustainable from end to end. Six hundred million live without electricity in sub-Saharan Africa, where almost 90% of children go to primary schools that lack electricity, often relying on harmful kerosene lamps to study at night. Strathclyde's Gambia Solar Project has installed solar systems in 13 schools to date, powering education and benefiting almost 5,500 children, whilst providing our own students with a transformational learning experience that demonstrates their useful learning. Whilst wind farms can provide protective havens for fish, they can prevent seabirds from reaching crucial food supplies. In collaboration with the Joint Nature Conservation Committee, we are studying the impact of offshore wind farms on the environment and wildlife. Through increased understanding of bird movements around wind farms, new wind farm developments can be designed such that wildlife is protected and sustainable energy needs can be met. The global housing crisis has revealed structural failures in how governments approach housing provision for the masses. Belgrade pictured in the former Yugoslavia is no exception. However, when founded in the 1950s, it pioneered a radical new approach, developing high-quality housing production shaped by its unique system of self-management. Our research of this understudied example aims to identify lessons and investigate the potential of social ownership in finding solutions for today's urban settlements. Renewable power generation is often intermittent and hard to predict with accuracy. However, mathematical modelling is increasingly being used to plan and operate power systems with greater reliability and efficiency. Working with National Grid ESO, we are developing modelling capabilities to assist the electricity transmission companies in making informed judgments and planning decisions, improving the appraisal process of future investments which will result in better value to the end customer too. Mounds of waste concrete mar the coast of Ayrshire in historic dump sites. As the world's second most consumed resource, concrete manufacture comes at a high economic and environmental cost. Working with a number of industrial partners, to explore a range of challenges posed by degraded concrete infrastructure, we are developing new biotechnology-based methods for concrete repair, generating clear benefits to industry and the environment. Renewables are powering an increasing number of our homes. Wind power is the second most widely used renewable energy source, However, solar power is the fastest growing. Working with industrial partners, we are developing the latest solar technologies and modelling their ability to meet domestic demand, 
in comparison to other renewable projects, such as the London Array wind farm pictured here, that meets the energy needs of around half a million homes.